pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your holy word. May it ever be to us our guide, our strength, our hope, our comfort, and our great joy. For Jesus' sake, amen. Please be seated. Of this past week, uh, my wife came home one day and said, Peter, I think uh, I've got a light out in the back of my car. Oh, would you check it? And so I went and turned on the lights, and she put the brakes on, and sure enough, one of the uh, lights was out in her car, and we agreed that she would go to Midas tomorrow and get it fixed. And I said, but you mustn't drive at night because you're liable to get pulled over and arrested. Well, wouldn't you know, that night in my dreams, I was the one pulled over and arrested by the police for a light infraction. It just, it wasn't fair at all. And, and speaking of driving, uh, I don't know if this is, probably isn't true for you, but it is certainly true for me that if I'm driving and someone around me is driving recklessly, or they're speeding, or they do something that endangers me, I will quietly say, please, Lord, let them be caught and arrested. I, and then immediately I repent, and I say, Lord, please forgive me for that horrible attitude, but, and, and I sort of am looking for the police car and hoping that it will show up sooner or later. I, you, none of you do that, I know. Something wrong is done, or not done at all. Someone is hurt, or I am hurt. Some decision is made on some higher official level, and unforeseen disaster results. In each case, someone does, or ought to, pay the price. In the old days, we would call this comeuppance. Veer off course in thought, word, or deed, and you'll get yours. You'll get your comeuppance. You will pay the price. And on the flip side of this, we, most of us at least, have a scorecard that we keep on everyone else. From our nearest and dearest, and for those, the scorecard is the largest, to the higher ups in our lives and the higher ups in the world. We know quite specifically, with all the evidence pertaining thereunto, who needs to pay the price when things go wrong and we do, in fact, keep tabs. I had a friend who, years ago, had gone to a restaurant and received bad service. And 20 years later, we're still saying, I'm never going to go to that place again. That's what we do. And what's the point? We expend a lot of mental, emotional, and spiritual energy keeping score and waiting for the price to be paid. And this morning in our gospel reading from St. Mark, we hear these words. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. May I put this plainly? Jesus of Nazareth, Son of God, perfectly obedient to every law known in the whole universe, says that he came to serve by paying the price. The price incurred by each and every one of us in so many big 
and small failures in so many big and small disobediences, he came to pay that price. So when Thomas Cranmer penned the confession that we use in morning prayer in the mid-1500s, he made it abundantly clear that we have all erred and strayed like lost sheep, following too much the devices and desires of our own hearts, offending against his holy laws, and so on. And there is a price to be paid. So I imagine you notice this price-paying language in our reading from Isaiah and in the book of Hebrews. Jesus is the great high priest, our great high priest, upon whom the Lord has laid all of our iniquities. The innocent pays the price for the guilty. Scorekeeping is turned upside down. Comeuppance is redefined. Jesus, crucified and risen, he is our purity. We don't have any of our own. Jesus, crucified and risen, is our righteousness. We don't earn it. Jesus, crucified and risen, is our obedience. My only boast is disobedience. I wonder what would happen if we took those scorecards that we have so carefully put away out of sight so we are not embarrassed by them. If we took them all out and brought them out into the light, nice big bold letters, here they are, all 580 things I have against all these other people. And I wrote next to each and every one, paid in full. Now I'm going to demonstrate this and I'm going to beg for indulgence for a moment and I'm going to invite two friends to come up here and we're going to do a very brief demonstration of this. I couldn't help myself and um, these guys are being more than brave. So I want to introduce you to God and to Jesus. And, I, and your real name is <laughs> Jeff. Jeff and Zeppi, right. Okay, so Jeff, you're God, all right? So we're going to be sideways here, and I want you to be facing God, all right? So we've got, and you're Jesus, right? Okay, so we've got the Father and the Son. Now, <clears throat> here I am. I'm the wretch with a scorecard. And it's very long, I'm afraid. I had to bring an extra coat to put the, all the different pieces of it. Now, <clears throat> this is actually a pretty easy demonstration. What does God see when he looks at me? Who does God see? He sees his son, right? He doesn't see me. He sees his son. And, and I, I know the love that you guys have for one another. And I know as you look at your son... What you see is someone that you love, and, and you just, you're totally caught up in that love. And so I'm here, and what I deserve is what he took on himself. What I receive is this eternal love. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you so much. So there's a... There's a story, and uh, it's a true story. It's uh, told by the former uh, dean, chaplain at Princeton University, a guy named Ernest Gordon. He was a, a soldier, a chaplain in World War II and in Southeast Asia, and he was caught up in that uh, really horrible 
uh, period of time when the Japanese were, were making these uh, prisoners of war build a railway so they could transport their troops up and down the uh, peninsula there. And there was a river, and it was the River Kwai, and they were uh, building this bridge over the River Kwai. And <clears throat> one day, the, all the, the prisoners were summoned. You must come and stand here, all of you. And the Japanese guard said, there's a shovel missing. Confess it. One of you has stolen a shovel. These soldiers, we, we didn't take a shovel. There's no shovel. The, and the Japanese soldier screaming. There's a shovel missing. Somebody stole it. Confess it or I'm going to kill you all. Nobody moved. They may have done other things wrong that day. They hadn't stolen a shovel. He told them once again, confess it or I'm going to kill you all. And one soldier steps forward and says, I did it. I took the shovel. And while, while, without a moment's hesitation, the soldier steps up to this poor guy and he's dead. He's killed in a minute. This one guy took upon himself this accusation. And because he gave his life, the rest lived. He paid the price that none of them could pay. And we're invited this morning to draw near to the throne of grace and in this holy communion to receive the body and blood of the Son who paid the price for us that in him we might live. Let us bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, we are not worthy. And yet you love us. We have disobeyed and you have been perfectly obedient. May we have the grace to receive your love this day and always for your name's sake. Amen.